a giant butthole. Hi, freaks, and welcome to another episode <laughs> of Horror Movie Freaks. My name is Matt, and joining me as usual is Nathan. Hello, Nathan. How are we today? Hello. I'm oh. good. How are you? I'm good. You've got <laughs> your great. glove again. You're giving oh, away. Got to wear it every opportunity. <laughs> just down at the shops earlier today with this. You can make a salad. I know, just chop it up. I mean, we're doing these movies every two weeks. That's six weeks of glove wearing. Yeah, I know. You're getting Fantastic. good value for money. Also joining us is the lovely Sue. How are we, Sue? I'm good. How are you? Good. Have you had a busy two weeks? Yes. I got a new work roster, which means an awful lot of work. So, yeah, working and sleeping. That's oh. been my life lately. Mm. That's very productive. Although I've seen a few movies because, you know, I was trying to be in the cinema. Yeah, the important stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Priorities are right. Exactly. So, we're into the second week of our, our Nightmare on Elm Street um, box set. So, the... People say Nightmare on Elm Street, but it is actually a Nightmare on Elm Street. I think people uh -huh. like lose the A quite a bit. Uh -huh. So um, we're watching the yeah the second one, which is Freddy's Revenge. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this should be an interesting one. It's kind of an infamous um, chapter in the Nightmare on Elm Street um, saga, isn't it? So I'm looking forward to discussing that with you guys today. And uh, just yes. a reminder, as usual, that we will be discussing spoilers. So if you haven't seen this movie um, and you don't want to be spoiled, then you know, watch the movie and come back and join us. Um, but you have been warned. Should we have a look at the trailer <laughs> and um, recap the Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge? Sounds good. Yes. Someone is coming back to Elm Street. He is not friendly. He is not patient. Kill for me. And he is not a welcome visitor. No! 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 But he has something terribly special for the new kid on the block. It started to happen again. Dad! I'm in trouble. You've had some scary dreams, okay? Help! Daddy can't help you now. There's something inside him. Because fight him! You are not afraid of him. He doesn't even exist. Freddy Krueger is back on Elm Street. Get out of here, Lisa! Jesse, fight him! Watch out for him. He'll be in your neighborhood soon. A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 2. Freddy's Revenge. <laughs> okay, I love those um, 80s trailers. Um, <laughs> it's always interesting that they have um, that logo, which is like a Nightmare on Elm Street, all sort of like in a red font just for mm. the, the trailers, but then... Um, for the posters, they always always use a different logo, so they couldn't mm. decide which. Wonder why they do that. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Oh yeah, <laughs> I never really thought about that, but you are correct. Yeah. Um. So, A Nightmare on Elm Street Two came out on the tenth of April, nineteen eighty six. Uh, it was directed by Jack Shoulder, uh, with a box office <laughs> of thirty million and a budget of three million. IMDb uh, currently sits at five point five, and a Rotten Tomatoes, it's 41% um, not so fresh, I guess. <laughs> Rotten. <laughs> that's Rotten. just audience score or, or not all critics score? No, that's not the critics score, just the audience score. Audience, yeah. Because I did notice when I went on Letterboxd, it was like one star and like four and a half stars kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so shall we get into it? <laughs> yes. I'm uh, so curious about what you guys think. So, um, so when um, was the last time that you'd seen this one? Um, I remember seeing it, like, not long after it came out. Like, I think I saw it on TV. So however long it took for it to be at the movies in 86, then I guess it probably would have been on TV 87, 88, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. So I would have watched it then. And I remember really not liking it at all. 
<laughs> I'm thinking, what is this? Because I love the first one. Um, and then I kind of, it's like the way I feel about Scream 3, where I just pretend it didn't happen. Mm. Like, it was like that. So I was just like, yeah, that's just not part of, that's just not part of it. I'm just going to ignore it completely and go on with my life. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, what about you? Um, was this on your radar at all? Uh, no, I'd actually completely forgotten about it. I watched it probably with you guys in the 90s uh mid 90s mid to late 90s and you yeah, haven't thought about it or watched it since so it was pretty much with fresh eyes yeah yeah so it's um quite an interesting movie when at the beginning <laughs> uh, of the film it, we have that weird opening um where they're on the the bus and there's the oh, yeah. two girls in the end and um our main guy did you think i guess we we know that it's that the main guy, main person is the guy. Do you think it was set up so that you were meant to think that the two girls were going to be part of the main cast? It didn't occur to me, but I know there was a lot of controversy when it came out because I read afterwards that there was a lot of controversy that they had a final boy instead of a final girl. So, yeah, probably. Mm. It probably was an intentional mm. thing. Why would that be controversial? I know it's just like the dumb thing to final girl, but why not the final guy? I think because now that's not as, I mean, it's still not that common, but it's not, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be outraged or horrified or anything if it happened now. But I think back then no one had done that. Yeah. I thought it was okay. uh, kind of like what they did back then. Cause I'm thinking of like Greece to Greece two, they switched the lead. So the mm. cute person, like the naive one, in Greece, um, the original Greece was Living in John, and they switched it to her cousin, who was a male, and then Michelle Pfeiffer was the more Danny Zuko character in, in two. So I was kind of thinking it was like that. They just thought, okay, well, the first one was a female protagonist, and then the second one's a male protagonist. I'm assuming they, they just wanted to... I, I know they wanted to move away from repeating... Like there, there's a bit of a a problem with sequels, I guess. You either do a complete copy, which is, people are not satisfied with, or you move so far away that it's not even feels yeah. like part of the series, which is another problem. So I guess they've got to find the, the balance in there. Mm. Yeah. And well, I, I can see what they did in that they probably did try and make it different so it's not exactly just a rerun, but also yeah. having a guy as the main character does set up a lot of the other scenes that happen later in the movie as well, which you wouldn't normally get with a girl. If they're going for the whole sort of jock, footy, sporty type character and that world, yeah, you're not mm. going to get that with a female character unless they're going down the cheerleader route pretty much back in the day. Back like then, yeah, yeah, yeah you would be right. It, it would have been kind of a bit weird as well to have Freddie coming out of a woman and, and her saying, oh, I've got Freddie inside me, which did sort of lead to innuendo already when it when it was a male but it may have been even more explicit if it was a, yeah. a female character maybe i okay. i actually yeah that scene that was that was pretty cool but i did think yeah you're right it would it would make people think of birth a little bit more yeah if it was a woman <laughs> but yeah to be honest early with that first scene um with the bus and everything i actually wasn't thinking about those sort of things i was just looking at it with the practical effects thinking oh it reminds me of Beetlejuice. <laughs> it does look very big and juicy, extremely yeah. model esque. I yeah. like that he wakes up screaming, and the the sisters like, "Why can't he wake up like everybody else?" <laughs> <laughs> Such annoying little sister. So <laughs> that um, did make me laugh. <laughs> did you think it was? Uh, I thought it was weirdly, um, like a weird family unit um, yes. that he was in. So he, he was like, you know, seemed to be mid to late teens and um, the parents seem to be quite a bit older than what you'd expect mm. them to be and then the sister the daughter was like very young it's like this family's yeah. very odd like i'd love to know this backstory of why they're all at different ages that are out, outside of the norm mm. like it's, it's well, the obviously there's these families like that but it's just for a, a stereotypical family they didn't really fit the mold yeah, I just thought that they, the mum and dad in particular, they almost tried to make them very stereotypical, almost 1950s mum and dad, yeah. rather than 80s mum and dad, which yeah. is a weird choice. Well, they all seem very disparate people. They didn't seem to have grown up together. No. Like, it didn't seem like they would come from the same 
place in some weird way. And it also seemed like they were trying to have that sitcom vibe mm. with the way that the whole cereal and the breakfast and, you know, and that, that Fu Manchu cereal that the girl was eating, like little touches of yeah obscure humour where you're like, yeah. I don't know. It had a weird tone. Yeah. Or is that just American in the 80s? Or is that just what the movies have led me to believe? No, because the first one wasn't like that. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the, the production side of it? Like, um, for me, it felt I a bit so. um, cheap compared to the last one. What were your thoughts yeah. on the production, Nathan? Yeah. That's in my notes as well. I wrote, felt kind of low budget, but very suburban, which, mm-hmm. yeah, it wasn't like a big end of the world type scenario, which like we get with a lot of movies nowadays. But I was kind of okay with that. I didn't mind that it felt a little bit cheap and suburban and it just felt a little bit more real, even though it was surreal at the same time. Mm. It felt TV quality to me. Yeah. Which and one of the things I picked up on like was, um, so the synth music from the first one, which you both enjoyed, it wasn't there in this one. Even the sort of... Freddy Krueger theme. Um, I don't remember hearing that at all. Like it just seemed no. to be very traditional horror movie sort of. Yeah. Um, the music in this one made no impression on me at all. Same. <laughs> I don't even really remember it. Yeah. You don't remember the whales? There was like whale song, like. <laughs> really? In quite a bit of it. Yeah. There was, there was like, um, I think it was near the end uh, when she's in that factory and um, there's like whale song and it appeared i think also when he was in his f- best friend's room and freddie came out there was like this whale song yeah it's literally oh, like not musical good. like it was just like whale singing sounds noises yeah. <laughs> uh, that is weird no, i did no. notice in that factory finale setting like the lighting was very different there was a lot of, a lot of colored lights and that sort of stuff and it felt a little bit like a joel schumacher movie mm. in that respect it was a little bit over the top. See, I love my Joel Schumacher, but I didn't get those vibes. Yeah. No, weird. But I think by then I kind of wasn't as interested. Yeah. Well, by, by <laughs> the end, the finale to me set in like that sort of factory with the lighting and that sort of stuff, it felt a little bit Batman Robin. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I could, see, I could that. see that. Um, What do we think of the cast? So... We've got Mark Patton as the main star, the final boy, Jesse. I thought he was an interesting <laughs> choice for a leading man. I mm. didn't think he was very strong at all. Did you think... But uh, act- I thought he thought his acting. His acting was fine, but I just didn't feel he had much charisma or... No. no. You, your nickness or talent? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his face changed a lot like sometimes he'd look a certain way and then other times he'd look another way so it was hard to get a grasp on who he was i don't know it didn't really work for me Mm. i thought um, that like nancy from the first film um while i wasn't as you know a fan of heather lang camp um but i thought thought that she had way much way more kick-ass sort of energy like um someone you sort yeah. of re- really wouldn't want to mess with where you think that the male one would be even more sort of aggressive and a bit of a go-getter, but he wasn't mm. at all. He was more passive than you'd expect a final girl to be. That's a good word. That is a good word. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He, he was... much more let things happen to him than the other way around. Yeah. He was a bit thin, really. You didn't really get much of a sense of who he was or and yeah, yeah, passive did let things happen and then just reacted rather than, what's the word? When you counter it, like when you're not reacting, but you're, you're the aggressor more. Proactive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then uh, that yeah. was more Lisa. So her character. Yeah. So she was almost the final girl. Um, and that she wasn't the main character, but she's the one who sort of took charge with a lot of the bits and pieces, especially leading into that finale. Mm. Yeah, but I didn't quite buy their relationship either. <laughs> 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 He was too uh, busy dancing around in his bedroom, him, like, well, yeah, <laughs> lusting like, after Ron Grady. <laughs> I don't even know. He hasn't been here for very long. So how how much time have they really spent together? Are that was very weird to me. First, it was just a lift. Like, I, I don't know. I was a bit confused. Like, all of a sudden we're in love and, okay. It, the, yeah, that, <laughs> that was very confusing. Like, I, I, I've actually watched this movie twice in the last week because I just had to 
it got to today and I'm like, I can't really remember. It didn't make much of an impression <laughs> on me. Like I have to watch it again. <laughs> and, and yeah, I just find that bit so weird that she pops around, but this guy's only just arrived. Like he hasn't even unpacked yeah. his bedroom, but she's getting yeah. lifts from him and he, she's rich. So why is he getting yeah. her lifts in his beat up old car? Like the relationship didn't make any sense. No. It wasn't well established, so I didn't buy her at the end going, I'll fight for him and all this sort of shit because I'm like, what you barely even know him. Come on. And there was no, <laughs> he wasn't reciprocating at all. He didn't seem interested. Um, no. There was that little moment at in the cabana. I said, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in the what? cabana while we're in Lixia with Freddie's tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so awkward. That whole scene was awkward and uncomfortable. But she didn't even know. She had her eyes shut. <laughs> Yeah. Thank <laughs> got away with it. Um, but, yeah, like I thought, um, yeah, that whole thing at the end was um, it was kind of undone because there was no relationship there. Like the thought that she could get rid of Freddie and bring him back. Yeah, I really didn't buy that. Yeah. What Which I'm assuming of- women's is like the power of love or something, but if we don't believe in their relationship, then. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What about um, is- Coach Schneider? Yeah, I've seen him in other things. He's so gross. I've seen him in other things before and he always makes my skin crawl. Yeah. What has he's he very been? good. Stand yeah. by me. I remember he was the dad in Stand by Me. Oh yeah, yeah. He was in a oh so I think Starship Troopers and Total Recall. Um he was oh, Duato okay. in um Total Recall. I love Starship Troopers. General Owen in Starship Troopers. Yeah, he has been in quite a few things. Yeah. Yeah, an interesting um, character. His role. Well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> his character wasn't meant to be likable. His character was meant to be a bit of a pig. And that's how he came across. So he did a decent job. If he was that overtly sexual with people and, and a little bit sadomasochistic, though, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be still holding a job. No. Maybe they were just looking the other way back in the 80s. More so than now. <laughs> <laughs> for long enough for him to have a reputation and, and a history of it and stuff, but that's yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> should we talk about your favourite bit, the the killer kills? Sure. Th- this movie didn't have that many. I know. Like I, the coach's death was very strange, like having balls thrown at his face and then the skipping rope, like dragging him. Right. Yeah. Was... And, like, he just slashes him twice and all of a sudden he's dead. Yeah. Like, yeah, it didn't, like, go through, like, any, like, organs or anything like that that we could see. We just... mm. And there's, like, oh. And then um, Grady's yeah. death um, when um, Jesse's in his room and transforms into Freddy. I thought, thought the transformation was quite good. Um, yeah, me too. But the actual death happened pretty quickly. Yeah, I didn't mind that death, though. I thought it was the scary part for me or the, the unsettling part was knowing that his mum and dad were just the other side of the door banging on the door trying to save him and he's getting yeah. stabbed right there so close to them. But Yeah, that was the only one that kind of affected me, mm. that I was like, oh, that's kind of sad. But the parents must be up, like heavy sleepers or it's like a really well-insulated <laughs> room because, like, Jesse was, like, screaming at him well before that, like, saying that he, you know had Freddie inside yeah. him and stuff. Mm. And it's like they didn't hear him until, like, he's banging on the door. <laughs> yeah, they only hear their son. They've got yeah. some sort of weird selective hearing. Right. Okay, sorry, I didn't know about that. Yep. It's an actual condition, yeah. <laughs> Be a bit more sensitive, Matt. <laughs> um, and then they just had, like, a, a random kills well, at the pool party. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. Where he just goes on a rampage. I did like the setting of that pool party, the production design. It was very 80s, with like the, the lanterns over the top and just the, the whole design of it. I really like that. But, yeah, it was all a little bit random. It didn't really – there was no real impact. Yeah, so the, the, it's, yeah. it wasn't great for its kills, especially coming off the back of the first one, which was so creative. Um, yeah, yeah, great. This one, yeah. Just looking at my notes, my favourite kill was actually Freddy himself at the very end when he melts away, like Wicked Witch style almost. That um, jaw, like, like melting away, like, yeah, really good. Yeah, and then, like, revealing, like, his burnt 
sausage crust of a body. Uh, <laughs> it look like a burnt sausage. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I say it like I see it. All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Grady. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, yeah, it would be a toss up between to... Freddie and Grady. Um, yeah, it was pretty close for kills. So did you have some favorite bits outside oh, of- Oh, maybe the love bird. <laughs> oh, I, I just couldn't because I suspected that that really was. Um, no, 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 no. You reckon? Nah. Like, I think flying around the room, yeah, but not like spontaneously catching fire. Oh, no, 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 yeah. the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably flying around the room was. But I no, no, the, 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 the love bird's lover. Oh, no, I don't think that would have been real. It's no. the 80s. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but I do think the way they carried on about, you know, when the bird was loose and they're all like, oh, my God, and really carrying on, like, it's a love bird. They don't even I know. Some people are very, very scared um, of birds, though. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock, the birds type. <laughs> oh, just, oh, it's <laughs> one love bird. Oh, right. oh, no. <laughs> no. It was a random, random thing to do. Yeah. There was a lot of random... I didn't understand the point of this movie. Well, that's the thing. It's like even with the first movie, there wasn't really a bunch of sort of set rules in terms of why things are happening. We just go with it. But this one was even more random. It's like why did the bird suddenly get evil and fly around and combust? Oh, well, that will get into my whole issue with the film, but we can talk about that later. Mm. Um, but then there was also <laughs> other – all right, I got in my categories. There were evil animals. So there was the baby-faced demon dogs guarding the factory at the end for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Then there was uh, some sort of rat or no demon cat as well that went oh, after yeah, the rat. Yeah, I forgot about and, that. And then the maggots crawling out of Lisa's leg wound as well. So that and the lovebirds. So they did That's a few sort head. of animal type things, but I don't really know why. Hmm. I thought so there were ants on top of it. No, I thought there were ants, yeah. Yeah. Um, so should we talk about the bits that we did like? Was there any <laughs> bits outside of the kills? Um, that we enjoyed. I like uh, Jesse's bedroom dance solo to touch me. Yes, me too. <laughs> that, that song like uh, was re-recorded, like came out in like in '92, was it? Like was it Lisa Stansfield? Oh, really? Yeah, sounds familiar. Me, baby. Yeah, I thought it was really familiar. I'm like, why do I know this song so well? She must have like watched this movie, going like, "Hey, this movie sucks," but <laughs> that I song. Cash in on that. <laughs> I like it. You know, when you did that little butt to shut the the drawer. Oh uh, yeah. The... <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I think we're heading for a butt moment." He was like, "Do you?" <laughs> yeah. Well, then there was another. Well, there's a couple of other butt moments earlier in the movie as well, like during that, like a footy tackle and. Someone's butt gets revealed and one oh, of the yeah. girls goes, ooh, hot ass. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Nathan? Bit in, the, in the shower rooms. Ooh, hot ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably the dance and the Fu Manchus and her saying, why can't he wake up like a normal? That's probably the only bits I really like. See, for me, um, bits that I did like for all its flaws, um, and I mentioned this in the first movie's review is that I found the whole idea of Freddy being in your dreams only kind of problematic because um, it's his world. Whereas in this one, the idea that he's possessing um, someone, so you could be possessed by, by Freddy, anyone could, um, and then you're going to commit murders on him, like or on your friends. Um, yeah. I thought that was quite a good premise. It's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde sort of premise. That yeah. You're sort of going to get I taken like over by Freddy. Premise. That said, Freddy yeah. wasn't just in um, Jesse's body the whole time. Like the pool party, he's walking around and walking through fences and uh, things like that. And that was actually one of my major problems with it, that they didn't follow the rules and that he is supposed to be in your dream. So I didn't, this isn't even a Freddy film as far as I'm concerned. Mm. But I also, I don't agree with you that because of the dreams he can't be defeated because, like, you can control things in your dreams. You just need to learn how to do it. And, like, I've had dreams where I've gone, oh, shit, this is a dream. I don't want this to be happening. And then I change it. Yeah, I don't, so, yeah maybe that's wrong the way I said it. Like, I do agree. Like, maybe it's just that he seems more powerful. Like, it seems like um, he doesn't have as many flaws as mm. he does in this film where 
it's actually Jesse um, that's sort of being taken over and he's in the real world. Um, so I yeah. do like that. See that. All right, apart from also when he kills the coach and like starts throwing balls at him and dragging him along the <laughs> skipping rope. That's not Jesse. That's just like Ghost Freddy. So again, oh, they was it? made like, their own rules, but they don't stick to that. Oh, was it? Or was mm-hmm. it like he just was, wasn't seeing it? Like, I don't know what you were meant, like what the, they were showing as the viewer versus what was actually happening in reality. Yes. Oh, so you think maybe that's what Jesse saw, <laughs> just like random things happening. Yeah, but actually it was. But he wasn't necessarily it. in the room all the time at that point either. He was yeah. in the shower. I don't know. It didn't seem to follow any sort of. I'm trying rules. to like cut it at some slack, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I liked that Grady's dad was the dad from Ferris Bueller. I was like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> I love Ferris Bueller. They did like oh, something. Oh, and at the party, you know, the guy that pops out and goes like, you're safe, man. Everything's okay. That oh. guy. He was from China Beach and I used to have such a crush on him. So I was like. Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> I thought I'd seen him before. He looked, yeah, really familiar. Yeah, it didn't last long, though. No. Well, he wouldn't because who can just go, you'll be fine, man. I've just seen you kill people and you're obviously on some sort of rampage, but I'll just talk you down. But you think like... Because <laughs> I've got no training in doing that. But right. anyway. <laughs> you think that they could overcome him, like, with that many kids? Yeah. Oh, that was just silly, having him walk around. No one called the cops. Like, come on, man. Mm. <laughs> And then, but he could do weird things like electrify the fence, like within without yeah. being near it. But what's he trying to achieve there? Like he's no longer just killing the Elm Street kids. What is his motivation? Mm. Just anyone? The whole thing just doesn't make sense. Mm. <laughs> um, I also didn't mind. Like I found it kind of refreshing the whole gay undertones yeah. of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that that, that was kind of interesting for being a 1986 movie um mm. what did you think of the, the infamous gay <laughs> under overtones <laughs> well, i didn't know about them until just like a few weeks ago and someone told me about it and it's like oh really and i watched it with sort of fresh eyes and i was like oh yeah i can see a bit more of that you get you I want mean, to I see a bit see more of that <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, like, I always knew it was considered the, the gay one and I've always been, thought that was a, probably its only real strength, yeah. to be honest. I wish that they had followed all the Freddy rules, but also had gay protagonists. Mm. Yeah. Like there's no, I feel like a lot of people have excused things about this film that aren't good because of that, when really we should expect <clears throat> a good film and gay protagonists. I want both. True. Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't get like a mediocre film. Um, right. What did you think of the bit where he went to a fetish club and then got caught by the coach and made to go back to the school and do laps? And- what was that? <laughs> I know. So- <laughs> the coach has no authority there. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, he just so random. To shut it, get on with his life. Like, come back with me. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and have a shower. Like, it's just it's all like, levels of wrong. Yeah, because it's like, all right, he, Jesse got busted there, but the coach also got busted there. So it's like, evens out. It's a, it's a valid establishment. Like, it's none of anybody's business. Yeah. I didn't understand but just because he was that. underage. I mean, I he went know. there and, like, they gave him a drink and he didn't even have any money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's true. And the coach isn't the police anyway. It's not up to him to say, you're underage, you're coming back with me. Mm. Like, what? That's just, no. It was, it was bizarre. You can run around the court for my entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Make it. <laughs> so when it came to his death, we didn't really care anyway because he was, yeah, probably some sort of pity fiddler. Yeah. 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 I know. Um, so should we go to the bit that I think we're all itching for, which is the, if it were up to me, what would we improve about this film? Is it anything that we could do to improve it? So you've mentioned that uh, it could be improved by actually following the rules of the first film. Yeah, that's, I would certainly establish that Freddy's in your dreams. These kids are from Elm Street. Like not just they happen to move into the house because so what? Um yeah, that would be one of my main things. If you're going to go the gay route, fully embrace it. Like, why do we have Lisa at all? Give him a boyfriend. Like, 
yeah, I would change quite a few things like that. I would get rid of Coach Snyder because I just, it's a little bit on the mm. edge of homophobia, which may mm. be a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, music. We need better music, better director. Like, to be honest, you know the scene with the dogs and the faces? I couldn't even see them clearly. I'm like, what is yeah. this guy doing? It was yeah. a rip-off of Body Snatchers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. I don't know why they bother putting it in just other than for just like a brief moment of, oh, what's that? I can't stand horror movies where they just put in things that they think are horror, mm. but they don't make any sense within the plot of the film. Like I still want a script to make sense and to follow on. You can't just go, ooh, that'll be scary. We'll chuck that in. Mm. What, what's the relevance to the plot? Yeah. Point. Nathan, is there anything that you would uh, improve? Uh, yeah, I've got two comments in my notes. One is to make it more gay. So they made it a little bit gay, but they didn't really lean into it enough. Mm -hmm. So make it more gay and actually make it scary because to me it wasn't. <laughs> that's that's true. We actually haven't talked about that. Like yes. <laughs> it was not scary movie, at all. You kind of expect scary, and this was not scary because of the tone. I think the tone was so all over the shop and wrong. Yeah, mm. the it ending is what I would fix. Like it wouldn't. It would be good if and um, they did bring if he got possessed by Freddy. Like somehow he did bring him out. Like um, Nancy did in the first film, and he took mm. over his body. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah, his boyfriend, Grady, like told him how much he loves him and their coming out and true love of each other and being honest is what yeah. killed Freddie. Mm. Imagine that film. <laughs> It'd be much better. It probably wouldn't have happened in 1980, whatever. Yeah. But now maybe it could. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, like you said before, though, I'm surprised they got away with as much as they did. So maybe they could have i mean we'll never know i guess but there's a lot of people that have watched this movie that have no idea that it's got gay overtones really yeah i think lots of comments <laughs> no! were like and oh i didn't realize until i saw on comments like that this is a gay one holy but it's e it's even like spelled out like um by grady to jesse when he said oh like you left like the girl at this, the party, and then you came <laughs> to my bedroom. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Grady was gay? Uh, no. I don't think so, but maybe. He did have a maybe. big poster of um, Tina Turner on his wall. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> oh, I love that Jesse had Kate Bush. I think that's awesome because I adore Tate Kate Bush. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, what a film. It was a very interesting film, but it also I also kind of found it a little bit boring, I have to say. Like, I hated the garden party scene because it was just so stupid and made no sense. And then after that, they kind of lost me. So then I was like, oh, yeah, now Freddie's dead. Oh, yeah, now they're on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other notes that you wanted to cover off before we go into our final thoughts? <clears throat> No. <laughs> no, okay. No. So, um, so I think you've got a lot to say about um, Freddy's Revenge. I'm really interested to know whether you think it's a patch or a trash. <laughs> What's your wrap up on? I know. I'm so I, I keep everything quite close to my chest. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what way should we go? I don't know. Surprise. <laughs> so, what, what do you think, Sue? Um. Well, I appreciate the gayness, um, but this doesn't have any of the tropes that I want in a Nightmare on Elm Street film. So, like Freddie killing people in their sleep, the the struggle to stay like to to stay awake. They didn't have any of that sort of thing. In fact, he was struggling more to get to sleep. <laughs> um, all the dream imagery, which I love, none of that was in there. Um, so it's just not a Nightmare on Elm Street film to me. So I'll go back to ignoring. Can I give it a trash? I take it. <laughs> uh, surprise surprise <laughs> Nathan what about you uh, look, I think I liked it a bit more than Sue uh, I, I didn't maybe look into the details and analyse it quite as much so just on surface value yes it wasn't scary so it failed there um, it was fun though it entertained me I don't know if it entertained me like more like a sort of a shocking silly kind of way and it's just fun I don't definitely don't love it. Uh, I'd say yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't love it, so it's no patch, so it's got to be trash. 
Thank you for all the suspense there. I didn't know which way you were going to fall. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a crash. Just a gentle. <laughs> so for me, um, I kind of, yeah, am probably more on Nathan's. I can see where Nathan's going with it is so bad that it's sort of all, almost good. Like B grade, um, how did this get made sort of shock value. Mm. But if you're looking for like a horror movie um, that's sort of um, got something new to show, then this is not it. Um, yeah, it's not something that unless you're watching the whole part of the um, Nightmare on Elm Street series. Uh, obviously, you've got to watch this, and you you'd watch it with um, probably a bit of um, tongue in cheek, just laugh at it for the sh the crap that it is. Um, but knowing that um, there's going to be some good ones to come up. So for me, it, it's definitely a trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one I'd recommend to watch unless you were watching um, the series and you're a completionist. You know, the thing, though, it kind of makes me think it's a bit of a, it's a shame because the first film did so well, they had a ready-made audience. It's such a shame that they dropped the ball on something that should have been a home run. Mm. Yeah. I think it was rushed. Especially like, in its day because those sort of movies were, like, really popular in its day, so they could yeah. have made a lot out of it. A lot of money and, and, and made a real impact in the series and, yeah, it's a shame that they kind of screwed it. But I think... Um... Probably what we've gotten it now is they had to scramble to actually make a, a good sequel, uh, which uh -huh. I, from memory, I think we should uh, feel differently coming up to the next movie. So with number three, I think they've pulled out all the stops to correct the total piece of shit that number two was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. We better bring back Heather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so we're watching a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street part th part three, uh, three, the Dream Warriors, on the twenty third of December, just before Christmas. Isn't that a great time to be watching? Um, How festive! Movies? How festive it is! Yeah, well, that's a red, I'm sure. I've done about yeah. the green, but you know. <laughs> I also just want to say that on the posters, they the people never look like the characters in the film. Like, oh no! Any I of those the painted ones. Yeah. 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 Looking, yeah, those are uh, Nancy funny. doesn't like Nancy, and um, the Jesse and his girlfriend don't look anything like what they I guess look it's like a style movie. of posters that was fashionable in the day, and they don't really do that anymore. But Freddie doesn't, yeah, doesn't look like Freddie either, like his yeah, walls yeah. are very different, like very long. Yeah, anyway, I digress. <laughs> that makes me think of um, Xanadu, you know, how the main guy has that job painting the album. Cover? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we go on some lovely tangents. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching today. So um, let us know in the comments below what you think of Freddy's Revenge. Did you like it? We'd love to know uh, the reasons why um, someone would like this film. You can also connect with us <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, just search for Horror Movie Freaks. On Twitter, just look for Horror Movie. Or on Instagram where we're the Horror Movie Freaks. Uh, we go live every other Thursday, and so make sure that you subscribe and hit that little bell notification, so uh, the bell icon, so you get notified when we go live. Thank you so much, uh, Nathan and Sue, for joining us today. I look forward to talking about um, the Dream Warriors in two weeks' time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Me too. See you.